Hey guys, Scotty here. Uh, this is that double queen colony I set up last fall. Put two hives in here. They both survived the winter just fine. Uh, the one on this side, of course, flying south. I don't know if that was the deciding factor, but it was a heck of a lot stronger than the ones on the other side. Both of them are strong. Both of them could have easily been split in half, but come on. If I don't get a couple of swarms per season, I'm not a happy camper. <laughs> um, I actually did steal two frames of emerging brood from this one and gave them to a, a nuke that's a little on the weak side. I also stole two frame of capped emerging brood with the bees, covered with the bees, and gave that to a different nuke. Um, also out of the first one, I found a frame of eggs and young larvae, and I actually gave to a colony, uh, you can't see it, it's just all over here. It, that colony had like five or six frames of bees, no queen. They weren't worker laying yet, um, Obviously, that queen just perished recently, and I feel kind of bad, George. That was Georgina. Uh, it was the very last, very first swarm I had last year. Uh, my lucky tree. Uh, there's a video on that way back. And turns out that, that swarm issued on jo uh, Buddy George from California. It was his birthday, so we called her Georgina. Well, sorry, George. Georgina is no more. So I've given them a frame of eggs, see if they'll raise a queen. Uh, again, just off to my right, two colonies down. I've set up a cell builder, haven't grafted yet, that'll be next week. Uh, possibly I can get it to hang on. I know there's only six frames of bees in there, to give them a frame of eggs. They may not raise the best queen in the world, but it'll keep it going until I get some of my own cells. And I mean, I could just split it and unite it to nukes, but what's the fun in that? Anyway, this one. Uh, I didn't videotape it earlier, uh, to be totally honest with you. I didn't feel like it. It was early this morning, I had my music on, I just out here having a good time. Reverse boxes, nothing to see. I think I actually did shoot a video. I don't know, I've shot a few videos. Um, remove both boxes, put down a clean box, go through them one frame at a time, scraping, cleaning, putting back in, watching for the queen. In both cases, I found the queens, um, put them back in. So now what I need to do is do away, I just put on two regular inner covers, took off my, I've already carried, them. oh, right here. The insulated winter, yeah, they're both laying here. There's some honey in that. Obviously a flow going on right now, it's dandelion for sure. Um, there's honey right here, and, and nobody's even touching it. But anyway, uh, just kind of put it back together with regular inner covers and the vent boxes. Um, the other side, the other side actually still has quite a few bees over it. With the winter inner covers, there was the upper entrance, and they were accustomed to using that. So I've given them probably about two hours. <laughs> I'm just looking at it. I might be giving them a little bit longer. Um, I got an awful lot of bees coming back here and they're landing on the hive and they're searching. Where this one, which I believe was the stronger one, well, there's still a few here. See, there's no entrance there anymore, but they're looking. Um, you know what, I might just leave it for... I mean, I'm, I know I can do this, but uh, I don't want to squish any bees and I don't want to stress them out. I need to put the queen excluder on and then those little triangle roofs. I already have the brood frame, or the drone, the green drone removal frames, the third one in on both sides that I will be able to access. Um, yeah, my sweetheart wants me to go plow the garden. We're getting ready to plant some stuff. So maybe I'll go do that and then I'll bring you guys back. We'll give this another hour or two to, to settle down. Um, and then we'll try and get some honey supers on this and get it set up, get it set up for the summer. So. I'll bring you back in a bit. Okay guys, it's been about three or four hours. Uh, I've got an awful pile of bees flying, but uh, still got some on the back that are trying to find the top entrance. The front one, they seem to have figured it out fairly well. Um, I'm gonna give this a try. If they're cranky, I'm just gonna close it and leave, and I'll come do it in the morning. But I think, I think I've got everything I need. The queen excluder, I'm gonna put a queen excluder in the center, of course, and then the honey supers go up, and then these little triangle roofs go on to give me access to that drone frame. I don't know if the camera will see this. This is curved, and I was playing with it in the shop on a couple boxes. I'll put it that way. The whole reason for this is to prevent the two queens from getting to each other. And I may even put a couple staples in there. You, I do not want the queens from the two sides getting across to each other. That'll just end up very, very bad. And I may have said it or may not have said it. I've already put the drone frames in here. 
I got an awful pile of bees, guys. I can see them up against the screen. Ah, smoker. Smoker's going here. Yeah. I do need to get them to go down so that I can get that. Uh, Oh, and I gotta find those those foil pieces. One second, I gotta go find the, the, the foil. Uh, I'm gonna use some tin foil stuff uh, as an inner cover so that they don't glue these down. Give me a minute. So this piece, this is the stuff that I wanted to use. This is what you wrap hot water tanks with. This piece is thicker. Um, this is what you'd put underneath a concrete floor. So I'm not exactly sure how this is gonna work. I'm making this up as I go, guys. <laughs> Um, yeah, no real way. I had a little wee bit of a gap here, and of course they were trying to find that top entrance, so I just stuck some painter's tape on there just to settle that down. Okay, I already got that stuck, wow. And I'm going to lay that in front, try not to bang them. I'm going to have to scrape that a little bit better than I did this morning. I'm going to do that right now. A little wee bit of uh, drone brood there. All right, let's get this other inner cover off. Number bees there as well. I can see I'm also going to have to scrape just a little wee bit there. All right, so the idea this wants to blow away. I can see this is going to be a problem. Now I put a couple marks where the center should be, give or take. I'm going to set this on. Now i got four of these. I do know that two of them, they weren't exactly the same. I may have some issues here. But I think, I think, okay. So that's going to go there. Then I've got a box. I'm going to staple that just to be safe. I don't think the queen's going to get across there, but... That is down, that is down pretty good. Uh, this honey soup is slightly, oops, not this one. This one here, if you watch the video where I'm making it, I've got these, basically the handles on both sides, because this one is designed to shed the water onto that. That's the whole, that's the whole reason for that. Now, I don't know which ones of these I need. hive tool. Show you. So um, both sides are same. Um, I do have a little bit of a gap here that I can pull this frame back and pull this frame back and then I can get my drone frame out of there. Uh, I explained this hopefully fairly well in that other video. Put the foil down. I may have to trim this a little bit. But that is going to work. Yeah. So the, the foil is just there to stop the bees from propolizing or waxing that down. Now, I was going to put a second. Um, actually, I got to repair that. This is just an old one I had. <laughs> Don't really need that. I can use a regular one. Um, I had made that one when I shot the video. Um, and I added a bunch of extra holes. I didn't know how much ventilation. Um, I can just use a regular one. Um, I don't know if I want to end up with two or three honey supers. I was chit-chatting with a fellow in the comment sections a while back. 
uh, someplace in Western Canada, and he had one of these setups. And he told me the two colonies fill these honey supers very fast. Now, he possibly has canola. I don't think I asked him. Um, maybe his fill it a lot faster than what mine are going to. But anyway, I don't want to end up with a big pile of honey supers. I'm thinking at the moment, and I might change my mind, subject to change. I'm thinking at the moment I'm going to leave one, and because it's so easy to check, I'll just simply come and check. And if I find that they've got frames here capped, I'll take it out and put it in Rubbermaid tubs and then I have a little building that I use for extracting honey and nothing else. My extractor's in there, it's kept clean, it's mice proof, in theory anyway. I've never had a mouse in there yet. It is a pretty tight building. Now I got a little bit of stuff that I put there, scrapings, so I'm gonna knock that off. And actually, um, I'm just gonna knock these bees off on the front door. I don't wanna squish anybody. So I'm going to do that. If I get the idea that it's getting too hot in there, I will, I will either fix that inner cover or I'll modify another one. Um, this is just an old one that I had had. Uh, I might even bought this and I added all these holes. I thought it'd be great. Obviously it's not glued and I just pulled that end off. So it's not the, not the best. No, I don't need, I only need one vent box. And a roof. So, if you didn't watch the old videos on when I made this, uh, without wasting a whole pile of time, the whole idea for this is, I don't have to take any of this apart. I can just lift this little roof off and I can access that drone frame. Um, and I'm gonna try and see if I can use that as a method for, Controlling the varroa mite, but I've done it in the past and it seemed to work just fine. The problem with it was in a, in a regular hive is you get three, four, five honey supers stacked up there. Possibly I'm not going to do that now, but you get all these honey supers stacked up and you want to go grab that drone frame. You got to tear it all down and you go in there and it never seemed to fail. Uh, if you read the literature on it, they say once every 21 days, so every three weeks. You go in there and the queen's only got it partially laid, nothing's capped. So you got to put it back together, wait another week, pain in the behind. Where this, um, this is a little snug, but that's fine. That comes off like that. This is going to come off and there's my frame right there. Uh, move these frames over a little wee bit and then, uh, yeah, then you can pull it out, check it. If it's, if it's capped, um, I have a plan for that. Swap it with another one. You have the option, uh, you scrape it off, throw it in the garbage, you throw it in the freezer, um, rotate them back, they'll clean it out, scrape it, feed it to your chickens. I actually have an incubator in it. I was doing it before and I just let the drone emerge. Um, confined and you catch all the drone, catch all the varroa mite, then you can count things if you want to. Then when you put it back in, you've actually got a drawn drone frame. And that's what I actually intend to try and do. Anyway, this is the double queen colony. Don't really know how it's going to work out. Um, just something that I wanted to play with. Uh, I got a few more things to pick up, obviously. I'll let the bees settle. And then I'll bring you back, I guess three weeks, records. <laughs> this one, this one you put sticky notes on the fridge so that you don't forget. Um, yeah, you gotta keep track of this. And I might decide to stack of it. If I find that they're not filling that honey super as fast as what Buddy Out West had said that it will, I, I can always throw two or three on. I was worried that the height was gonna get too high, but looking at it right now, I'm not as worried as I was. Anyway. Thanks for your time, guys. I definitely appreciate it. You guys be good to your bees. I'm sure it'll be good to you. We'll talk to you soon.